welcome to my new series, Tracing Without Tears. I'm so glad you joined me for something completely different from Clever Someday. I often see people asking, what's a good video on tracing? What are the steps for tracing? Or my personal favorite, can someone trace something for me? These are not simple questions because the answer depends a lot on the type of image you want to trace or want someone else to trace. This video series is going to be different because I hope to help you understand some of the underlying principles behind tracing without getting too technical. I'm hoping to take some of the mystery out of tracing for you, help you choose better images to trace, and then give you appropriate steps depending on the kind of image you have and what you want to use it for. So let's get started. The first thing you might be wondering is why do I have to trace some images and not others? Well, your silhouette or any other cutting machine needs instructions on where to cut which we give it by way of paths in our silhouette documents. Paths are sort of like the dotted lines on the worksheets you might have enjoyed cutting out when you were a kid. Paths simply tell the blade where to go. Where your silhouette is concerned, a path has no color or width. Because these cutters are digital, they need the paths communicated to them in a particular mathematical style. In English, it might sound something like, start at a point one inch down and two inches to the right of the origin, and draw a circle three inches in diameter. Scoot over four inches to the right, and start drawing half-inch equilateral triangles. Repeat six times on three-quarter inch centers. Graphical data communicated in this style are also called vectors or contours. Most of the images you're probably familiar with are not in the form of paths or vectors, but instead are coded as a grid of tiny dots or squares called pixels. In English, this might sound like, in the first row in the first column, put a white pixel. On the first row in the second column, put a blue pixel. And so on to the 5,000th column of the 5,000th row, or however large the image is. These types of images are called bitmaps, or raster images. These formats are great for storing photos and other images with lots of detail or subtle shifts of color, but they don't make any sense to a digital die cutting machine. So that's why we have to trace sometimes. Tracing, also called auto tracing or vectorizing, is the process we use to translate the pixel data in a bitmap image into a simple track for your die cutter's blade to follow. The designs you get from the Silhouette online store or other designs in Studio, DXF, GSD, or SVG format are already vectorized and don't need to be traced. The same is true for the fonts you have loaded on your computer. You will need to trace when you want to cut images you bring in from other sources that are in JPEG, PNG, TIFF, BMP, GIF, or PSD formats. With that out of the way, we're ready to look at tracing in Silhouette Studio. You need to know that Silhouette Studio's tracing function is very basic. It's important to understand that Silhouette Studio can only trace based on brightness levels. In other words, it is colorblind. Other programs such as Inkscape and Make the Cut can trace based on color, transparency, and more. But Silhouette Studio's trace engine is limited to seeing everything as shades of gray. Because the trace is so basic, the image you start with is the biggest determiner of how happy you will be with the results. The ideal image is large and clear with crisp edges. It would contain solid areas of flat color separated by a thick, dark, or light border. There should be high contrast, especially between adjacent colors and the fewer the colors or brightness levels, the better. And you don't want an image that is so detailed that you will not be able to cut it at the desired size. Ping format is preferred if you have a choice because they can have transparent backgrounds and have fewer artifacts for a cleaner trace. You probably won't ever have an ideal image, but this list will help you pick when you do have some say in the matter. First, let's look at the simplest kind of trace, that of a silhouetted shape. This meets our criteria for an ideal image, so let's see what happens when we trace it using the default settings. The first step is to click the Trace button, which is over here close to the right side at the top. It looks like a blue blob or maybe a butterfly. And then click on the Select Trace Area button. This activates a special kind of rectangle we use to select the portion of the image we want to trace. So click and drag to surround the area you're interested in. When you let go, you can choose more settings from the panel on the right. Without changing any settings, you can see that we get a yellow outline that looks great to anyone who doesn't yet understand the way tracing works. But here's the best tip I can give you. Think of the yellow in the tracing preview 
as a preview of what your image would look like cut out of yellow paper. So for example, the default camera would look like this, which is probably not what you intended to cut. The problem lies not with you, but with the unfortunate default that Silhouette chose. Click to uncheck the high pass filter, and you'll see the entire camera shape fill with yellow. The corresponding cut looks like this. Now that's more like it. To finish our trace, we would click the Trace button drag the original bitmap away, and delete it. And now we have a proper finished trace of our simple or ideal image. So we saw that leaving the high pass filter checked is one reason for the so-called double line problem that baffles new tracers. The other reason you'll get double lines is when you trace line art instead of solid shapes. If we trace these two butterflies, for instance, again with the high pass filter off. The solid one yields a single outline like we want. But the line art dutifully traces both sides of the line, which means we get double lines. Let me show you by zooming in. Hope you can see this on the video. You have a red line inboard of the black line and outboard of the black line. And that's what we cut and not what we want. Some programs like Adobe Illustrator and Make the Cut are smart enough to trace down the center of a line, but Silhouette Studio is not. If you have to trace line art, you can release Compound Path and remove one outline, but it's always easier to start with solid shapes while you're starting out. So we've looked at why you need to trace, how to do a basic trace in Silhouette Studio, how to pick an ideal image, and how to avoid double lines. That's probably enough information for our first video. Hope you've enjoyed watching.